Welcome to the Baseball Utility Coaches Webinar. First, I want to thank all these great organizations for everything they do for the game of baseball and for always supporting Baseball Utility. And then a huge thanks to Kevin Kuzminoff and Aaron Nakula for helping out with putting these webinars together. And tonight, we got Pat Mish and Scott Emerson who will enlighten us with their pitching knowledge. So Mish, pitched for six years in the major leagues, 14 years professionally. He played in Japan and Taiwan and threw a no-hitter in game seven of the Taiwan series to clinch the Chinese League Championship. And then we got Scott Emerson. Emo played for seven years and has been coaching for 21 years and has been coaching in the major league since 2015 and is currently the Oakland A's big league pitching coach. I just want to thank them both for their time and for sharing their baseball knowledge with all of us tonight. Thinking of the five elements of pitching, location, change of speeds, movement, effort level, and velocity. Start, start your bullpen by locating, change your speeds, get some movement going, make sure your delivery is good and you wanna add some velo, add some velo. And then we break it down into three parts. It's scripted, it's things we're working on, and it's the reaction to our last game. Go ahead, Rosie. Here's a, here's a typical bullpen routine on some guys. And when you see fastball middle, that means just the catcher is setting up down the middle of the plate. The pitcher has 17 inches to work with. We want him throwing a strike. We want him throwing a strike. You get to the, and the red and the, and the black, red and black, if you start in the windup, when you get to the black, you go to the stretch. When you get to the red, you go back to the windup. When you get to the black, you go back to, you're constantly switching. Because in games, you don't just to say, hey, I'm going to throw five innings out of the windup in the last four out of the stretch. You know, things happen during every inning during the game. So you want to be moving throughout your bullpen to get used to going from the stretch to the windup, back to the stretch, back to the windup. And, you know, all our players, we sit down and we create our own uh, bullpen routines. This is just one example of our routine. Glove side means you're going to shade a little bit, the catcher to the glove side. The change up, like Pat mentioned earlier, we're going middle and plate and down. All right, next slide. And just a little uh, little tidbit on um, in my opinion on bullpens. If your guy's going to throw a, you know, a lot of times, you know, guys say they've got like five pitches these days. Um, you know, if if you're going to throw a 25 pitch bullpen, you got five pitches. You want to work on all of them. I don't know if you're going to get that much work in. You know, make it maybe break it down into two, and then your next bullpen hit up another pitch. All right. So last week, uh, Nuke and and Coos and and Rosie they talked about competition. You know, with the hitters having some competition. So, you know, to be mentally tough and, and strong as a pitcher, uh, you got to be competing against yourself sometimes. It's like getting out on the golf course. You know, you're trying to beat the golf course. Maybe not the guy you're playing against, but the, because you're, you're, there's no combat between you and that player on the golf course. It's you against the course. Do what you can. So right here, here's another example of box a fastball. That's another term for plate it. Throw a strike. So this pitcher in particular, he wants to start his first five pitches out of the windup, and he just wants to box a fastball. That's a strike. Second pitch, same thing. Third pitch is glove side off the plate. So he wants to throw one, uh, if he's right-handed, he wants to throw one into a lefty off the plate. So you put check marks if they succeed. So uh, all the boxes across is one bullpen, and the, the boxes, the second line is the next day's bullpen, and they're competing against themselves to try to execute these 20 pitches in their pitching routine. Because... Once you execute these pitches in your bullpen routine, it'll take your game level to a whole nother level. So this particular pitcher who I had in, in 2008 double A, he, would, he got to the point where he was really good at about 16 of them. He was executing 16 out of 20 pitches. Now it took him about 12 to 15 bullpens to get to that, but uh, it's a good way to grade yourself and don't give it to him. Oh, that was close. Here's a strike. No. 
this plan here is to see how good you're going to be getting in your bullpen levels and track your bullpens so it will take your games to a whole nother level and then um here's just a quick summary of pitch count you know it kills me in youth baseball it kills me in high school baseball if a pitcher in the major leagues or in our minor leagues major leagues is a little different because you know we're we're, we're you know, it's the ultimate league. We're, but in the minor leagues, we've got a lot of guidelines. If you throw 36 pitches, you ain't pitching the next day. I've seen youth pitchers throw 40 pitches and throw the next game. For me, that's ridiculous. Uh, there's no need for it. I mean, if you're, if you're under 15 years old, I mean, we, we start remembering high school games, but I, I, I have a very small memory of little league games. If, if, if you're worried about winning the little league championship and you're sacrificing, uh, abusing an arm, that's in my opinion, that's not right. You ought to think about that. Uh, nobody's going to remember your little league championship unless it's the little league world series. But, uh, so, I mean, take a quick glance of this. It, it's not rocket science, but, um, these are my guidelines and I use these guidelines in the big leagues. Obviously a guy throws 36 in the big leagues and he tells me he can pitch the next day and it's his uh, situation. Uh, we might go with it, but um, you know, I, I probably won't like it, but understand why we have to do it in the big leagues. At certain times we have to go above it, some of these uh, pitch counts, but uh, uh, in the minor leagues, no pitchers can pitch in three straight ga days. So um you know, obviously we want to get our pitchers to the big leagues fresh. Uh, and hopefully you as parents want your players to get to uh, higher levels of baseball fresh. The one thing that I did want to uh, mention too tonight is um, watch pitching for your high school team, taking a month off, pitching for your summer team, taking a month off and pitching for your fall team. Because too many guys stop throwing. Constantly pitching is bad for you. If you're, that's where the overuse is, but playing catch isn't bad for you. So if you're starting and stopping and you're starting and stopping, you're basically having three seasons in one year. That's not good. I'd recommend that you constantly play catch and you move into your next season, but you've been playing catch. Um, I also recommend at least two to three months of no overhand throwing to let your arm recover. Can Emo and uh, uh, Pat briefly touch on I know I'm trying to, I'm slightly switching gears, but can you guys slightly or uh, briefly touch on the importance of having um, a good catcher to help a pitcher execute uh, a game plan or potentially get the best out of that pitcher when he's stepping foot on that mound? Because ultimately, that's what, that's what uh, the catcher's uh, goal is. Yeah, so one, um, you know, when I'm, when I'm working with some guys, um, the catchers are a huge help, you know, and sometimes if you, if, if you give them, Hey, I want to set up for a fastball inside and they don't get in enough. Right. And they've got the inner third and then it leaks back over the middle of the plate. Well, you didn't do your job, right? Well, now all of a sudden he sets up on the inside corner, right, right on the black and it still leaks over. All right. So sometimes with those, um, with the pitchers, especially if you you know if you're getting into a flow of a game, if all of a sudden you see your pitcher, it keeps leaking over. Well, move in a foot off the plate, help them out because then when it when it comes back to the black, all right. Well, now you did your job, and that's how you're helping out your pitcher. I lived with catchers. I lived with a lot of catchers because I, I wanted to talk shop all the time. I wanted to talk my game plan. You know, I knew when I, you know, left-handed, I know I always talk about my best pitch being my pickoff move, but, you know, when I'm throwing my sinker, I wanted my second baseman in the hole. When I'm throwing my slider, I'd turn around and, and, and move my shortstop and my third baseman over to the line uh, because I know out there what I'm doing. And, and I knew what I was doing because I had good coaching. I, I really did. I, I was brought up in Arizona having great coaching at, at my high school and, and my junior college. And, forcing to be around some great major league pitching coaches and uh so you gotta teach the plan you know if a guy takes a first pitch heater 
why are you throwing a breaking ball in the dirt? He hasn't given you any information. I mean, just a lot of stuff, you know. You throw a first pitch heater, he takes it. Throw one inside. You throw a breaking ball, he swings and misses. Well, either throw another breaking ball or throw a heater inside. No need to throw a changeup. You know, he hasn't done anything with it. So these are parts of how to call a game that you can teach to your catchers. And then, you know, you get a good catching coach like Nuke, and then these guys know how to – How I wanted my catcher to be able to steal the ball outside the strike zone and present it as a strike inside the strike zone. That's who I wanted catching me. I didn't want the guy that was going to ride it out and, and not care. So, you know, I mean, I can't tell you how many how – many, um, iced teas or, or dinners I had to buy for my catcher to get him to make sure he was working hard for me, you know, because I, I needed him. And your catcher is very, very important to helping you grab extra strikes in the strike zone. And, and man, you, you need to brown those, those amigos because those guys make my life a lot easier. And the guys that we have in the big leagues, make my life a lot easier based on understanding how to call the game. Yeah, that was tremendous. I mean, in player development, uh, and Emo knows, and you guys know that at the lower levels, when these catchers come into the organization, a lot of them are not familiar or know how to execute a game plan or call a game because the game is being called for them either at high school or at the college level. So they come in and they're unaware of how to execute a game plan, what digits to throw down, uh, when to move, how to move, how to make adjustments, how to – uh, recognize hitters' strengths and weaknesses. So, um, you know, it's, it's really important and an integral part, I think, of pitcher success is to have catchers know what they're doing back there. Like Emo said, though, at the end of the day, it's ultimately the pitcher is the one that's throwing the ball and has the ultimate decision on what he wants to throw. But, yeah, you guys nailed it on the head. Thanks so much. We had, uh, we had Kurt Suzuki. I was Kurt Suzuki's pitching coach in Stockton. He went out he to went behind out. home plate first game of the season. And Suzuki's one of the best game callers of all time right now, in my opinion. But the first game of the season, he goes out behind the plate, and all of a sudden he's running back to the dugout, and he does like a pop-up slide before the gate. And he says, Emo, what are our signs? I said, what signs? He goes, that you're giving me to call the game. I said, buddy, you're on your own. And so I had to teach this guy, you know, what we're looking for in calling a game. And, you know. I'm glad he got his World Series ring. I see. Well, so we got, I think, Eddie Menchaca. Did you have a question? So you're raising your hand. Yeah, I do. So Eddie's a, he's a, another coach with the Oakland A's right now. Very s smart baseball mind right here. So Eddie or Chaka, what's your question, man? I had a question for, uh, obviously, Pat and, and, and Emo. How big are you guys on arm action? You know, I know as a hitter, um, even if you're facing a guy that throws 80 to 100, but has the same arm action in every pitch. Um, how big are you guys on that? I know uh, in the lower levels with our young guys, you know, uh, your five uh, pitching uh, development stuff that you have here is, is amazing, but you see a lot of that, you know, where they slow down on a curveball, you know, or they do something different um, on, a, on a pitch. I mean, how important is that? Well, it's, it's huge. I mean, um, you know, obviously that you at foot strike, you want the ball to be up. You know, um, we used to always think that the elbow should have been above the shoulder at foot strike, but the elbow can be below the sugar, but below the shoulder and the ball up because as you rotate your trunk, that's when you start to lay your elbow back into external rotation and then your elbow gets above your shoulder. So it's when you get above your shoulder. So now you got to go even farther back to your mechanics and how you land and your whole mechanics, putting your arm into the proper position. And you want to put your arm in the proper position on every, every pitch you make that gives you the deception of uh, the hitters not knowing what pitch is coming, you know, some, you, you do have to raise a little bit on a breaking ball because the fingers kind of start working above the ball before it kind of flattens out. So there's a lot of things to it, but your posture, uh, you know, if you bail out, then that arm appears to be longer. You know, do we have long armors or do we have body rushers? 
So sometimes when you lift your arm, uh, but you go out too soon, your arm appears to be dragging, but your arm was going in the proper position. Your body was just going forward. So it's timing up your mechanics to put your arm into position on every pitch. So I think I said last week, I don't use the term stay back. I think it's a bad term for pitchers. How can you stay back yet go forward? No, you know, hey, I need you to stay back. Hey, go forward. But what? Yeah, that's the confusion. What, what do you mean? So I tell pitchers, get back and go. So they get back, they drop their hands, and they get it into the slot, into position as they're moving forward to get, lift their arm up. If we're you know, telling them to stay back, they might not know when to go forward. So I call it load it up and go. Get on the back side, create some energy, create some inertia, know when to dump the hands down to go back up as you're striding out. So arm action is very important because if you wrap it, if you wrap your arm behind your back, more times than not, you're gonna bail your head. When you bail your head, back to you, Coos, I see over there, but back to Coos, when you bail your head, your arm's going to be so long and appear to be late, the hitters now can see the baseball and track it for a long time. You might throw 100, but like I said earlier, I can time a bullet, and if that's all you got, and if you're bailing out, that 100, when it gets to, to me looking at it as it's coming to the plate, it's going to look maybe 95. 94, which is still hard, but not hard to a big leaguer, especially when they know it's coming. So I hope, Eddie, I answered your question that, you know, you want to have a, a good repeatable delivery. Everything looks the same all the way throughout. Uh, you, you stay firm on the front side, the head's going straight, and uh, you're hiding a baseball. I use another logic of if we're boxing, I want to throw the jab. I throw the jab and then the punch and I'm going straight towards my target. If I bail out and pitch, you, the boxer's got a, a, a left hook on me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm wide open, I'm susceptible. Same thing in hitting. If I bail out and my arm appears to be dragging, whether it's dragging or not, but I'm trying to create that strong velocity, the hitters see the ball and, and, and you're backing up third base more than anything. So. You, you know, a, a violent delivery from the head down, that head's got to stay in a good position to put the body in good position, which gives you good arm action. I call it an online stroke. You want that arm to be, you know, kind of online. You are going to turn and rotate and hide the ball. You're going to turn that upper half so you can create shoulder and hip separation. But if you're bailing out so much, man, that's not pitching, that's throwing. You know, javelin and throwers may do this stuff, but major league pitchers don't do it. The good ones don't. And, and, and how do you repeat, right? Your repeatability um, just with all your pitches. You know, I don't want to give the hitters any chance to be able to see, you know, an off-speed pitch more than my fastball, right? Um, I had good deception and, and late life on the ball. That's why my 86 looked a little harder um, or appeared a little harder. Um, now with that younger kids have a hard time with their head moving and it's just kind of a strength thing. What's good for that is shorten up the distance, right? Shorten up the distance so they can get that feel and eventually time they will go back to where their head stays online. So that can help them. Hey, I see my boy Keith. And, and a lot of here. times, uh, that arm slot, another pro. Up. Another good one with the arm slot, um, you know, if, if we felt off um, when we were pitching, we would go take ground balls at short or third and then field the ball, throw it to first base. That's where your natural arm slot is. Do it all the time. Great drill. That's a great way to end it. A lot of great information. I feel like we could talk for two more hours. <laughs> that two hours went by really quick. Um, I really enjoyed it. I can't thank you guys enough for staying on. It says a lot about the, the participants that are on, taking the time out of their day. Obviously, I know we're in a quarantine right now, so we have a little more time. But, but still, to take two hours and to, to talk baseball, that's what we need more of. That's what we're trying to do with baseball utility. And Ro Rosie. Go ahead, Emo. Uh, if you guys email Rosie, I got no problem answering all your questions. So email Rosie, he'll, he'll, he'll send me uh, the questions. I'll bang it out over the next couple weeks or so. 
and I'll, I'll get all the questions back to you because, you know, at the end of the day, I want to help players. Now, obviously, uh, you know, the information that I throw out, I can't give away the whole playbook because, yeah, you know, I want to keep an advantage for our pitchers and our organization. But um, uh, I, I, you know, I, I have a lot of passion for, for helping people. And, and that's and that baseball is a great game. And that's that, that service leadership that Emo and Mish both have. A lot of, a lot of uh, coaches and parents on this webinar, you participants also have that. Um, you can just tell for the time that you're putting in being here with us.